Hello sixth grade, welcome back to Math in Less Than Five Minutes with me, Mrs. Grage. And today we are looking at Saxon 15A test. Now, if you are clever and you are watching the video, get ready with a pencil and paper because I'm going to do some problems that are actually on the Google Form test. Here we go. So one of the questions you'll be asked today is to find the area of the parallelogram. This pen is not working. <laughs> Find the area of the parallelogram. Now, remember a parallelogram is just like a rectangle, right? It has two sets of parallel lines. The key though with this problem is that in a parallelogram, you need to be given the height, the perpendicular height, to be able to find the area. And how you do that is on a test, you will see a line or a dotted line down the middle. So in this example, to find the area, it's still length times height, and the length is six centimeters, and the height is four centimeters, not five as out here. So it's six times four, and six times four equals 24 centimeters squared, right? So don't be tricked, and don't use that five, okay? That is for the perimeter area, finding the perimeter, okay? Another question you're going to be asked today is 7% of $6.80. So Jubilee brought, bought a sandwich for $6.80. The tax is 7% of that. Jubilee has $10. So she has $10. How much change is she going to be given back uh, after the tax is added? So we have to find 7% of $6.80. So 7 over 100 times $6.80 over 1, okay? So we are having to do um, $6.80 times 7. So off to the side, do your multiplication. Um, six, 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 8 is 56. 7 times 6 hate the seven times table, it's 42, 42 add five is 47. Now put the decimal in, okay, it's right here, two after the decimal, two after the decimal. Now we're going to take that answer and divide it by 100. Why? Because that's our division there, okay? Instead of dividing by 100, I'm going to move that decimal. There are two zeros, move the decimal two places, one, two. Now, You've got 0 0.476 cents. This is cents that we're using now, right? I'm still putting a dollar sign because my decimal's there, right? If the do dollar sign and decimal wasn't there, you could write it as 476 cents, okay? However, the bank does not deal with money in the thousands place. It just doesn't. It deals with it in the tens and hundreds. So you're going to ask the question, will this six impact the seven? Is it going to stay as seven or will it change to eight? Is it 47 cents tax or 48 cents tax? Well, it's 48 cents tax because they always move up, right? So now we're going to take the $6.80 and add 48 cents to it. $6.80 add 48 cents. $7.28, and you better believe that's on there as an A, B, C, D answer, but that is not the question. It was not what is the total price of the sandwich that Jubilee got. No, the actual question is how much money will Jubilee get back if she pays with a $10 bill? So now we have to do the math of $10, subtract $7.28, right? Now we're going to borrow from these guys, right? Borrow here, making him nine, making it, make, sorry, making him 10. Yeah, 10, nine. <laughs> borrow from the 10, making it nine. 10, nine. Nine. Nine minus eight, one. Nine minus two is, uh, dear me, seven. And nine minus seven would be two. So Jubilee in the end is going to get $2.71 back once she's paid for her delicious sandwich. And let us know what you had, Jubilee, so we can all have a bite. Okay, that is the answer to that stinky question. 
Those questions are difficult and they stayed difficult for me when I was a young person. It did not get easier until I was a little older. So if you're like me, hang in there, you will get there. Okay, another question we're going to look at is 45 over 54 and we're going to show it in prime factorization. So you have 45, I keep using this dead pen, save me, 45 over 54. What we're trying to do here is I don't want it in its simplest term. I don't want it in the lowest form. I want to know what numbers you use to get, to simplify it. What are the prime numbers used to simplify it? So start with 45 down in the box. If you divide by five, because it's prime, five what? Five times nine, right? Now you can't divide by nine because it's not a prime number. Four, no, five, no, well five is, but nine doesn't like five. Three, divide by three. How many times can nine be divided by three? Three times, oh hey, we can divide by three again. How many times does three um, get divided by three once? So now the prime factorization of 45 is five times three times three. Or another way to say that would be five times three squared, right? Now remember, that three squared part, that's not sixth grade math right there. I've just introduced to you seventh grade math, and some of you like that because you want to be smarty pants. And that is okay. Now find the prime factorization of 54. Well, we can't divide by five, that's not gonna work. However, what is five plus four? Mm, nine. Oh, nine is a multiple of three, three, six, nine. We can divide this number by three. Let's do that. 54 divided by three, nine goes in ones, 24, three eights, 24. 18, divide by three again, six. Divide by three again, two. Divide by two, you get one. That, are, that is the numbers used for 54 in prime factorization. They are three, 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 two. Or you could write three to the power of three times two, right? Now, if we were gonna show it in its simplest, simplest forms, which we're not, you could cancel off three. So if you cancel off a three here, that's one over one, one over one. So now you're left with five over six as your reduced fraction to the lowest terms. Hopefully that made a little bit of a sense to you. And finally, the last one to help you on your test is subtraction. Everyone has a hard time with subtracting still, and it's difficult. Subtracting fractions, not easy, not easy, no. Six and a quarter, subtract three and seven eighths. Now, we could convert them both to improper fractions, which is really a good step to do. However, seven eighths, we're, we're dealing with larger fractions. Okay, so let's go ahead and subtract the whole number first. What is six subtract three? Three, right, three. And now you've got three and write the first fraction, one quarter, subtract seven over eight. Going to have to convert that three and one quarter to an improper fraction. Three times four is 12, add one is 13 over four, subtract seven over eight. Each time you're writing the problem out. Now we need to get a common denominator. You can't add or subtract if the denominator is not the same. Wait a minute, is four a friend of eight? Four, eight, oh yes. Let's change this fraction to eight. We didn't touch the seven over eight, leave it as. 13 over four we did, two times four is eight, two times 13 is 26. Now they're eighths, can we subtract? Yes, 26 subtract seven is 19 over eight, but we're still not finished because now we have to take that improper fraction and make it a mixed number. How many groups of eight are there in 19? How many groups of eight are there? And how many will be left over? Eight, 16. Oh, two groups. 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, three left over. Three over eight. Now, don't stop. Let's make sure the fraction is in the lowest terms. Three over eight. Hmm. Odd number, even number. Does eight like three? Three, six, no, it does not. Three is prime. This number will no longer reduce. That is your answer to that problem. And because you were so smart and you stayed with me, you've automatically got four problems correct. Have a great day.